Man, oh man, I woke up this morning. I could barely walk, my back hurt so bad. And uh, sat down and started sweating and got up and had to go throw up. I have no idea. I I have no idea what uh, what happened and why I felt so sick. So it's gonna be 110 today. And uh, I'm, I'm probably not gonna do a whole lot. I still don't feel very good. So there we are. I'm gonna get this inside and get it set up and get it bolted together and get my uh, wheels on. So uh, I'll see you inside. Alrighty. Yeah, I still don't feel very good. I'm not gonna probably stay out here very long. No idea what could possibly be wrong. about a copperhead snake last night. Isn't that weird? I never dream about snakes, but I dreamt that uh, there was a copperhead in my garage and it was gunning for me. Some people may be wondering why I went through all this trouble of uh, cleaning this up and making it all pretty when it's probably just going to be covered in dust very shortly. And the answer is, I don't know. Sometimes I just like making old things look new. And I think that's the uh, immense amount of pleasure I used to get from finding stuff at the dump and then bringing it home and making it work again. Chainsaws, weed eaters, lawnmowers. And uh, for some reason, that really used to make the, the, the people that worked at the dump, they used to make them so mad that I would take stuff out of the dump and bring it home. When you would think that people would be happy that somebody found some additional life and something. But that wasn't the case. And uh, eventually, they told me I couldn't do that anymore. So, I started being real covert about how I would take stuff out of the dumpsters. Okay, I'm not gonna tighten these down too awful tight because these little tabs might break off.
using my new wheels. And these wheels will require some uh, breaking in. There's a, a right and wrong way to put these on. So this is a reversed red on this side, so lefty is no longer loosey. Lefty is tiny. Get that thing in there. Good Lord, come on. probably going to need to be balanced and basically you just take something hard like a file and uh, you hold it up there and a the high spot hits it you know but we'll see in a minute we'll see <laughs> Wait for it to stop. Uh. 
it, uh, it doesn't feel like it's out of balance. So both these wheels need to be conditioned now. And uh, this is basically paper, cardboard. It's a paper wheel. And uh, so is this, but uh, this has, I'll show you. It has grit. Well, this is the, uh, the carbide grit. And what you do is you, when this thing wears out, you put some Elmer's glue on this and then you roll this carbide grit onto it before it dries. And basically this starts your edge. And on this one, you put regular polishing compound. And like I say, they've both got to be, you know, what you would call seasoned or broke in. And I'm going to do that with some, just some old scrap knives. Uh, in this kitchen here of this trailer, there's some knives in the kitchen drawer that just have been left there. And uh, I'm going to be practicing on them at the same time wearing these in. And uh, I will eventually get the nerve up to start putting the edges on these knives using this. Okay, I feel like crap. I'm going to go into my knife shop. I've got a dinner skinner that's uh, sold, but that I'm working on. And I can only do so much today because I'm waiting for uh, uh, the handles to come in. I sold this gentleman a, a neck knife a while back, and it had the red and white synthetic handles and and uh you got an ant on me and i didn't have any more of that and he wants the dinner skinner to match it so uh i ordered it i found the exact same handles basically from the same guy that i bought the other ones from and uh so what i'm going to do today is get that knife sanded up and ready to uh, have the handles put on and i'll just wait for the handles to get here i may go into my leather shop and just go ahead and uh, start making a sheath for it because uh, depends on how I feel anyway so this project is done I like it and uh, I'm real happy that I went ahead and cleaned it up and what I'm going to do is take a big towel and when I'm not using this just put the towel over this to keep all this other grit that I don't want on it from getting on it and I'm not talking about the machine itself I'm talking about the wheels I don't want to contaminate the wheels with any grit okay so let's get in the other shop. Okay, this is the dinner skinner. Uh, just got it out of the tempering oven. And I'm gonna get this cleaned up. Let me show you my little gram scale. This is uh, from Team Timu, Timu. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do with it. It's really important that you mix these. This is the epoxy that holds the handles on, and it's really important that you use the exact same amount of hardener and resin. So, uh, you know, I've always done it by eye, by holding the cup up and looking at these little indentations, you know, the lines on the side. But I remember back in the 80s uh, seeing these. I can't remember what they were used for back then, but... Uh, Anyway, and then you would pour your, you know, the this in there, and whatever grams it said it was, you could either clear it and tear it, and then put the exact same amount of hardener in there, or you could just double it, you know. But anyway, now. I will be exact. You know, I, how do you talk about yourself with, without sounding like a, uh, a bragger? I have gotten to the point, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about myself and uh, I'm not bragging. I'm just stating what I think is a fact. I've gotten to the point with my knives where the improvements that I make are 
tiny increments that nobody else would probably notice. I mean, a year, two years, three years ago, you know, my improvements were major, you know, because I went from one end of the knife making spectrum to the other end of the knife making spectrum. And I got to the point where my improvements were, you know, from this to this to this to this, but also my knives look far better now and then they did you know years ago so now i find myself trying to improve the tiny little things like getting the uh epoxy mixed up exact and uh buying that sharpening machine so i can put perfect edges you know this diamond this lansky diamond sharpener this is where i sharpen the knives here with diamond sharpening stones uh, I got to the point where I'm really good at putting a very, very sharp edge on these. It took me a while to get there. And now I'm going to the next level with that sharpening machine. And uh, I don't even, I, I feel so bad I forgot what I was even, my, what my point was. I guess my point is that I'm at the point now where my knives are good enough that there are no major leaps and bounds and improvements. There's these small incremental things that that I'm trying to make, and this is just one of them. You know, it's just a, just a tiny little improvement, but only I would know it. And the same with the sharpening machine. It cost me $100 to go from pretty dang sharp to uh, scary sharp, surgical sharp. Hundred dollars plus fifty dollars for the wheels. So you know, and this lasts me the rest of my life. Anyway, I'm gonna get the sand in that, and then I'm going into my leather shop, and I'm gonna go ahead and make a a sheet for it, just because I don't feel like going in, and I can feel bad out here, just like I can go home and feel bad. Alrighty, see you in the leather shop. All right, I have got this dinner skinner cleaned up, and now what I do is I go put it on my buffer. Buff it up real nice, and then I come back with some 600, and uh, I put some nice straight lines coming out this way on both sides, and it gives me a really nice satin. It's a satin shiny finish that won't that will it will last unless you cut tomatoes or dip it in vinegar. <laughs> All right, let me go do that, and then we'll go into the le leather shop. I'm not going to say leather room anymore because. Uh, that sounds weird. All right, so this is the satin finish. I'm gonna put a little wax on this until I get my handles and uh, get back in here to work on this because I don't want that nice satiny finish to get any rust on it. All right, I'm making the uh, sheath for the dinner skinner. And this is the belt loop that's going on the back. Uh, I am going to use this burnisher for the first time. Let me get you in the camera tripod here and uh, we'll, we'll experiment with this. All right, I'm gonna put a little wax on this. That's looking really good. Wow. Put a little bit more wax on it. Oh yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Huh. I 
I'm glad I put this thing on that board to get it away from the desk because I like working underneath it like this. That way you can see what you're doing. Wow. I don't like that. I'm glad I spent the, the money on that. Yep. All right. So, uh, yeah, that come out real nice. All right. Let me go get this sewed on there. Uh, I am going to do a, a black fade on this. Hold on. I'm trying to get it without getting dye on my hands. So, uh, I gone ahead and put my black up here at the top that I can't burnish after it's sewed so I'm gonna go ahead and burnish this now both sides inside and out and uh, that will be something new that I'll be able to do on sheets because this has always been the impossible area to get burnished after it's sewed because you can't get anything in there let me go do this and I'll show you what it looks like and then we'll get that belt loop sewed on well that little machine there is gonna make a huge difference in my burnished edges All right, let me get this sewed on, fold it over, get my webbing glued in there, and then we'll go to sewing the sheath. I'm about halfway done. Okay, I uh, used my burnisher, and it did a really nice job. This is for the, the knife I'm making for uh, Josh, someone David works with, over there in Marshall. And it's uh, synthetic. It's white with red swirls in it. So uh, I used some red dye on this and some red thread. And uh, I like it. This came out real nice. Okay. Have a good Sunday, y'all.